Hi everyone, I have decided to film this video a bit more raw. I'm sure a lot of you are aware that my videos are very choppy, very edited. The reason being the first time I filmed videos, I was obviously down south and our internet speed was absolutely awful. So I couldn't film long videos, I couldn't keep in me breathing between saying stuff it just everything had to be neat and tidy and chopped down so from then i kind of just went on as i've always done so they've always been quite choppy that's been my style of videos that's how i'm used to editing so long videos are not my speciality shall we say and another reason they're quite choppy is because talking to a camera makes me quite anxious <laughs> um that might be a surprise to some of you because on my vlogs i seem quite chilled but actually sitting down and setting up my camera and setting up the lights and stuff puts me on edge a bit because it's it's like this is it now, you've got to film, you've got to say everything right, you can't muck up. And during the process of doing that for however many years I've been doing it, I've realised I've actually developed a kind of stammer or a stutter. Not like classically, you know, stuttering my words, it's more I stumble over things when I'm saying stuff. I know what I want I know what I want to say in my head, but when it comes out of my mouth, it comes out too fast and then I'm like blah, blah blah. So that's another reason I haven't done live shows in the past. It's why I haven't done long videos because I sometimes have to repeat the same sentence five times over, maybe even ten if I'm really having a bad day. Um, it completely depends on how stressed I am, how anxious I'm feeling at the time in general. So that's why I've never done a journaling video like this before. But a lot of you, when I asked what videos you wanted to see, requested a Q&A journaling video. So I thought this is maybe the time to be a bit more open with you, a bit more chilled and, you know, I've not got my lights on, I've not got my background down, I've literally just got my desk, my camera and my journal and also my phone with the questions on that you guys asked. I don't know how often I will feel, Ugh. see, that's that's one of my things. <laughs> Words just don't work. <laughs> um, I don't know how often I will film some of these videos like this. Hopefully it'll be a bit more often than usual, but please don't expect them from me <laughs> every single week or something, because I'm just not gonna be able to stick to that because I'm not using my studio light, the natural light or sunlight, which there's not really much sun, but it's out there somewhere. So it's gonna make the lighting go a bit squiffy at times. But yeah, I thought this was the best way to keep it raw and real and down to earth. Not that I'm not real in my other videos, but they're obviously highly edited and chopped down. Because of all of that, this is gonna be a longer journaling session than I usually post, so if you want to journal with me, that'd be awesome. I've taken my journaling insert out of my Nyadori and I'm still, I'm still in the process of documenting my Brussels trip. I'm gonna put the brightness up a little bit and zoom you in a bit because yeah. <laughs> I also have to deal with these noises and my neighbor with a motorbike. So that's another reason I chop my videos down quite a bit because of that. <laughs> Um, but hey, we're raw today, so gonna have to deal with it. And also the buses. Buses go past every 15 minutes, so yeah. <laughs> I'm still documenting my Brussels trip. I've kind of, I've split the photos into, we different dates. So I've got the dates on the back of them. And I'm trying to group them together on pages that kind of make sense, because they all have different stories surrounding each photo. And some of the photos are just there for the sake of wanting to like keep the photo somewhere. I don't know how well I'm gonna do at multitasking with my journaling and answering questions, but yeah, we will see how it goes. <laughs> I'm gonna grab some papers and stickers and bits and pieces, bung them on my desk and I'll get back to you. I've picked out a load of boxes and stuff from my shelves and brought them over to my desk. My go-to boxes for when I'm journaling are my scrap paper box, which this has been just a dream to have with journaling. Um, since I sorted it out. So I have tons of different papers that I can use in the background. Um, I also bought over some 6x6 paper pads, just ones with kind of generic colours that I can use on basically anything. 
um, and obviously the watercolour one because I love my watercolour paper. I have my ephemera box which is full of bits and pieces that people have sent me, um, like stuff that I don't really have anywhere else for. I have my die cuts box with all my die cuts in and I have my large sticker box which has all of my alphabet stickers, all of my simple story stickers and any other bigger stickers that I own in there. I ask for questions on the community tab of my YouTube channel uh, about what well, it says two weeks ago on here. <laughs> I might not answer them all because I might have answered them recently because I did that little Q&A thing on Instagram. Um, but yeah, so why did you decide to create a YouTube channel? I've had my YouTube channel since 2010, I think. Um, and the reason I got it was just to comment on videos, basically. I didn't do it, like, to start my own channel. I just wanted to be able to comment on other people's videos. When I started my Instagram, um, I... Oh my goodness, this is harder than I thought. I'm gonna have to, like, answer the question and then journal, and then answer the question, and then journal. Oh, come on brain. I started my Instagram first, and I did Happy Mail on there, and from that I then found Smash Booking, because obviously once you found like the Happy Mail community, you find the Crafty community, you find the Planner community, you find all the creative communities on Instagram, and I basically had a go at them all. <laughs> so I found Smash Booking through Happy Mail, and I started sharing my pages on Instagram and a few of my followers at the time said I'd love to see how you put them together, how you make the pages, have you ever thought of doing like YouTube videos on them? And the answer was no, I didn't like plan <laughs> on doing videos on them. I decided to give it a go because I named my YouTube channel, thankfully, the same name as my Instagram so they were all matching up. So yeah, I gave it a go, posted some videos, then I found the planner community and I got a new planner and I decided to share that on there and it all just kind of snowballed from there and I tried loads of different crafty things, shared them all on my channel and that's where I'm at today, so yeah. That's how it started basically. Um, wasn't really intentional, it was more just, yeah, a snowball effect really. I'm not gonna be able to do this, like multitasking, I'm really not. My brain, I think it's because my brain in general just has so much going on. Do or talk, talk or do. Not both. <laughs> I need some washi tape, hold on. See, when I'm choosing washi tape, I tend to take my little photos over to my washi shelf and pick out colours so I can like literally colour match my washi tape to my photos. So I've picked out some washi tapes that kind of go with the colours in the photo. And when I'm picking washi tapes, I try to choose a couple of plainer ones, a couple of more patterned ones, usually one with like some sort of text on, especially if I'm doing a page that I don't really know what to title it because um, this is like a bit of a mix. There's a photo from the Erin Condren booth, there's my lunch from the day, and then there's a selfie with Chloe and Kat. So yeah, it's a bit of a mixed page. So I picked out some washi tape that said hip hip hooray on it, because kind of goes with it. Which of these excites you the most? Working on your creative journals, smash books, or planners? Hands down creative journals. That is my like go-to. I love doing that. I could do that probably all day until I run myself in the ground and then I'm like, ugh, no more stuff. But smash books were obviously where everything started and even though I haven't been doing those as often, I do still love them. I am planning to get back into them at some point. It's just one of those things where my hobbies have grown but the time I have to do them in hasn't. So I have to prioritize which ones I really wanna do and creative journaling just seems to be the one that I'm always drawn to doing. I feel like I need to find some stickers that might go with this as well. Actually, I'm going to have a dig in my ephemera box to see if I can find something to go with this page. Just knocking stuff over, left, right, centre. If you could get another pet, what would it be and why? I honestly really want another dog. <laughs> I've been talking to the trainer that I've got for Bonnie and she said that Bonnie would benefit from having another dog about because she's so social. And I did think that before I'd even spoken to her, but obviously I'm pretty sure any <laughs> any pet owner is like, oh, I wanna get my pet a friend, um, whether it's the right move or not. I only plan on doing that when Bonnie's at a point where she's walking okay on a lead and she can do her recall. Everything else, like around the house and everything, is really, like, very close to being perfect. She doesn't chew her bed up anymore. She doesn't pee anywhere anymore. She goes to bed nicely. She 
is still a bit nervous about getting a harness on but she goes to the front door now instead of um, like hiding under the table and barking out the window if she's quiet I bung like a handful of treats in front of her and she's totally cool with that so she's getting the hang of that very gradually I just really had to up the reward I was giving her yeah it's just her recall she's too friendly she runs over to other dogs all the time and doesn't come back until she wants to come back um which is fine it's better than her being aggressive but it's not fair on other dogs um especially if they're on a lead because you don't know why they're on a lead they might be nervous they might be aggressive themselves so yeah we've still got to work on the recall but other than that i also have been really wanting to get like a really boring animal <laughs> and i say boring in the nicest way possible but something like giant african land snails like i had before or fish or yeah, I had those sorts of pets when I was at the farm, but obviously I had to get rid of them when I was moving. See, this is the stuff that I usually cut out of my journaling sessions, because if I left all this in, I would honestly be there hours. But I do a lot of rummaging through supplies to see what I can find. I look at colours mainly, just to see if there's anything that matches the colour scheme I'm going for, which in this case is basically like surrounding the colours in this photo. That could go, because I've got my yellow shoes on. Um, maybe some flowers. Oh, I don't know. No, I don't want those flowers on there. Oh, how's about that? That's cute. I'm gonna put that one on there. Food, friends, and sunshine. I mean, that can work because I've got food, friends, and sunshine on my feet. We'll go with that. We're gonna use that sticker, I think. <laughs> how's your day been? Just wondering. <laughs> um, it's been good. I vlogged about this today, but yesterday we went to the Crystal Maze and it was amazing. And I didn't think I'd be able to do any of the challenges because of my anxieties, but I managed to do two. I didn't get any crystals <laughs> because I failed, but I managed to actually do the challenges, which is more than I thought I would when we got there. So just the day in general was really nice yesterday. So I'm feeling really good this morning and I was just feeling like good about wanting to work. Like I'd had a couple of days off with Jack and so now I'm just kind of itching to do work. I get like that because I'm so used to working like 24 seven. <laughs> Anytime I have a day off, I'm like, I need to work now, I want to go back. I'm just gonna stick this down. I don't really know if I want anything behind it. I don't think I do, but I feel like I just need to get something down on the page for me to work with. I do find that sometimes if I overthink things, I just don't end up making a page or I, I'm just not happy with it. So sometimes you just have to stick stuff down and hope that something will come to you <laughs> in the process. I'm gonna put this at the bottom of the page just because there's not as much pink down there. I might have to cut it neat. Mm. I'm gonna put some yellow behind it so it breaks it a little bit. This page isn't gonna be like loads of writing. Um, it's more of just like, I need the photos documented somewhere. Let's make this neat. <laughs> or should I say, let's make this kind of neat. It's sort of straight, that will do. <laughs> um, see, now I've put it on the page, it looks darker than this. Like the pink looks, makes that look purple, like almost purple tinged. I'm gonna leave it. I'm just gonna leave it. I might add some of my dark pink tape, this one, up the top somewhere so it balances it out. Um, just wondering, I know I'm a bit of a busybody, but do you have anxiety issues? Please don't take any offence. I don't take any offence to things like that. <laughs> I'm quite open with my anxiety. I spent years and years not being open about it. Um, and that led me to some not fun things and fun not fun moments of my life. When I was diagnosed, they told me I had general anxiety, social anxiety, and well, I mean, all of them kind of tie in with each other, but basically my main issue was socially, like I just couldn't talk to people. Then the general was just kind of like, every day my heart rates up a bit, more than the usual person. And travel anxiety, always had that never really liked traveling and that's not like just traveling abroad that's traveling like on a bus somewhere i just yeah the whole process until i'm on the bus sat there and know where i'm going i just yeah completely freak out <laughs> but alongside that that triggered depression then i realized i had sad now i'm kind of debating whether i have sad or whether i just have depression because <laughs> i'm getting like depressed in the summertime which isn't 
normal but then I'm trying to work out whether that's just my situation right now and the stress that I'm having at the moment triggering the depression I don't know mental health is not easy <laughs> but I'm I'm getting on with it and I think the best thing is that I am aware of it and I'm like taking note of my triggers and stuff I feel like this needs to cover that bit of my bag because I don't like that bit but I don't know how like I want it like that but I don't want it just like that I need some washi tape or something underneath it okay I'm gonna put a line of this up the top so I've got this down somewhere. On my Patreon, I have put as one of the goals recently that when I reach the 150 patrons mark, for one, it means that Patreon will become my full-time job, um, which obviously means that I don't have to stress about money. I can just create content for both Patreon and YouTube. I don't know if you've noticed, but in the past month or two, I've been able to put out a lot more YouTube videos. Um, and that's pretty much just down to Patreon because I don't have to put as much time into other things to get money from other places. Obviously money's like a massively taboo subject on YouTube. Um, but at the end of the day, like YouTube isn't worth the time doing it. If you're doing it like full time, you're not getting a full time payment out of it. So obviously to support myself, I can't put all of my time into YouTube because I'm not getting any payment back really so I can't actually buy food or you know um which is why I tried out Patreon because it obviously allows me to create extra content for you guys but also get compensated for it I suppose like compensated for my time that I put into it the more people who become patrons um basically just means the more time I have to be able to create content and the more that I can put back into my channel, my Patreon. But as I was saying, one of my things or my goals for my Patreon is when I reach 150 patrons, I will be doing a live stream, which is terrifying to me because <laughs> just the thought of being like on the spot, I suppose, that's something I always struggled with at school. But I'm hoping it won't be as scary or daunting as my brain is making it out to be. I'm looking forward to talking to people live, like not having to wait for someone's response. But I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna back out or anything. I will be doing like a crafty, I think I call it a craft party um, when I reach that. So I'll just be basically on live crafting with you guys when I reach that little milestone. Um, so yeah, I've just kind of built up the page there with washi. Um, like in the background so I've got something to kind of sit my photos on like I, I suppose I suppose I make little shelves on my page so I could sit my photo there I could sit it there I could sit it there I think I'm gonna overlap them though and have it like that and this one up here I'm overlapping both of them to have that there and then this one um, I might just put it up there like that but I want to put something behind here before I stick that down. Um, um, oh, I know what I can do. I can put a little corner behind it. Let's try that, shall we? Cut it in half and put it... Hang on, how would it have been? Would have been like that. And I'm going to stick it like... So it's wider. So you can see it behind the yellow sticker. Does that make sense? Probably not. <laughs> Hang on, let me stick them all down as I want them and then I'll show you. Someone asked me before why do I always stick down photos with like double sided tape and everything else pretty much with Pritt stick. Photos I feel like just need a little bit more especially as the back of uh, the Canon selfie paper is kind of glossy but it's like matte shiny it has a bit of a sheen to it like if i write on them i have to let them dry so yeah i just feel like double-sided tape gives a little bit more strength whereas stuff like paper sticking to paper is going to stick fine with prit stick this is where i have to get a bit tactical with it so i'm going to cut some bits of double-sided tape and stick them underneath the stickers that are flapping up i can't stick the stickers down before my photo because i need the photo to help line them up so i stuck the stickers to the back of this sticker but they're not stuck obviously to the photo because the photo isn't sticky on the back. So 
So I'm going to put one piece there. And another piece there. And I'm going to somehow, <laughs> this is so fiddly, and then I'm going to take off a little bit of that. Stick down the sticker to the double sided tape. And the same again with this one. And then I can put double sided tape on the rest of it. I just realised I put that up the other way. I was going to have it the other way up. Oh well, it's down. We're just going to go with it. <laughs> what about crafting do you enjoy the most? I think I just, I enjoy the freedom of crafting where it's not like a right or wrong answer. There's not a right or wrong way to do it. You just do it. You switch off from everything else and you just craft. <laughs> How is it like to have a house of your own now and living with your significant other? I love it. I love the whole living on my own thing. I like being able to have my own space. I like being able to organise kitchen cupboards the way that I want them to be organised. Um, don't get me wrong, love my family, love my mum, but I just can't get over how she organises cupboards. <laughs> um, for little things like that, you don't really think of until you move out and you're like, oh, hang on a minute. I don't have to ask where I need to put this or where this goes or where I should put this. I can put it where I want it and it will be there <laughs> when I go to find it again. You know, if I want to leave my bag downstairs, I'm not gonna have my mum calling up the stairs going, why have you left this down here? <laughs> um, little things like that is what makes me enjoy it, I think. And obviously living with Jack is a lot of fun, but he isn't here a lot of the time because he works, which is one of the reasons I got Bonnie because I was by myself quite a bit. <laughs> and I love having like movie nights with him. Like we don't have to worry about, you know, who's watching the TV downstairs because no one's watching the TV downstairs. Usually when we were living at the farm, because Jack lived with us for like a year and a bit, um, if we wanted to watch a movie in on the big TV downstairs, we'd have to find out if my dad was watching the TV or if there was something on TV that my parents wanted to watch. We couldn't use the TV. Whereas now, if we want to do a movie night and Jack's here, we can get the popcorn sorted, we can go and get treats from Tesco's, we can come back and we can just watch the TV and watch a movie. And it's just yeah like hassle free type thing. Is crafting your only major hobby? What else do you do and how often do you do it? Photography is my other big hobby. I did this a lot at school and college. I don't know what else to do with this as well. I'm like <laughs> trying to think but also trying to talk. Yeah I did lessons at school and college. Um, I did GCSE photography because I was lucky enough to go to a school that had a photography department or whatever. We had like a dark room um, and we could develop our own film and do a lot of that sort of thing. And then I carried on and took it again at college, when I went to college. I love it, I love the skills I picked up there. And I don't do it for fun as such, you know, just like whenever I fancy. But I do do it obviously for this job. I take photos all the time. Um, every day I think I take a photo for something, whether it's a blog post, for Instagram, for my journal. Like, I'm always taking photos, so I get to enjoy it that way but I do miss just kind of going around the farm and taking photos and getting getting a bit you know fancy with how I take photos and experimenting and I don't do that sort of photography as often as I'd like it's more like set up photos that I take now oh okay I'm gonna do some blue corners let's see how can I work this that will do that will do can't be too picky with it there we are so I've still got some writing space I think I'm going to whack the date up there somewhere. Where's my date stamp? Hold on. See, that's the other reason I don't do live streams. Because I have the most squeakiest chair in the history of squeaky chairs. Ooh. I'm going to leave that page there because I'll come back and write it a bit later. I'm going to do another page because there's still questions to answer. I just need to figure out what photos <laughs> I need to document next. That's all the 29th. That's all the 30th of October. And these ones are all 28th of October. So I've been documenting the Brussels trip in order as well. So I've got like 
<laughs> the start of the journey excuse the swear word but hey when we first got there and then the first day of PlanaCon I thought I might as well document these in order because it was like one thing I'm documenting so it'd be a bit odd having it all over the place see these photos aren't super colourful which is where I struggle um because there's nothing that really stands out to me to be like Ooh, I can use that colour in here. I'm going to choose a piece of ephemera or a sticker or something that goes with one of these and then pick some colours out of that piece of ephemera or sticker to then work my colour scheme around. Um, that's just how I do it if I don't have a colour that stands out to me in the photo. I'm going to go through my die cuts because I've got a few new packs of die cuts recently and I want to try and use some of them. Um, one of them being the Vicky Boutin, Boutin. She does absolutely beautiful pieces of ephemera and just general like collections and stuff. Um, and she is with American Crafts, so you can find her. Go on, up on the window then. Up. Good girl. You can find her on Amazon, and just anywhere that you can find American Crafts stuff. So I'm just going to go through them. The little boxes are so handy. This is how I go through my ephemera. Um, and I'm going to try and find something that might go with these photos. Um, anything I think might work, I put out. I just take it out straight away. See, that's a good piece of ephemera for the goodie bag because, I mean, that's a reaction and a half. <laughs> um, so I think that might work. See, then from that, because I know that I definitely want to use that now, I can take the purple and the red and the black from this and use that as my colour scheme. Um, in which case I'm actually going to put this guy back because <laughs> I'm not going to use him. I'm going to carry on going through here to see what other purple and red and pink and black pieces I can find. Because I've got something with text on, I'm trying to not go for something else with text on. I'm trying to find some shapes or flowers or something else that's not got text because I don't want to overload the page with text. I try to keep like just one title or one piece of text, like big text. How many times can I say text in this <laughs> um, per page? I don't want to just have pattern or just have titles and text. Just one more text there for you. But yeah, I love this ephemera pack. It is just absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna figure out what I can do with these so far and see if I need, I think I'm gonna need two pages for the spread. So, we're going to be doubling up. What Traveller's Notebook brand do you recommend? I love my Zinni Dories. I always have. She sent them to me to obviously do videos on, but they are hands down one of my favourite, if not my favourite, Traveller's Notebooks. I just can't really describe it. They just feel so nice in your hand. They've got the weight to them, but they're not too chunky. Someone said, hi, I was just wondering whether you'll be selling any planners soon. I've just done a D-stash on my Instagram. I don't know if you were one of the people who bought from me, but yeah, if I'm doing a D-stash, I tend to do it on my Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, then my Instagram is my green cow, and that's that's the only place that I really do these stashes. I do post on Facebook groups every now and again, but it's just easier to keep track of on my Instagram, really. So yeah, we went out for dinner, then we went to the shops, then we got back to the hotel and I went through the goodie bag. So I want to put that on there, but I want to put this here. See, now I'm debating whether to just put this on one page, and then these ones, if I add a flap to the page, I can probably fit all the photos on without losing too much writing space, so I might do that. I'm going to start with this page first though, because, I mean, it's basically done. I just need to make it pretty. <laughs> if you woke up and could do anything you wanted, what would your dream day out look like? I think I'd want to go to Cornwall, because that is my place that I just feel so relaxed in when I go there. Just going around to the beaches, going around the shops, going to arcades, just kind of reliving my childhood a bit but as an adult I think that would probably be the best day out for me. Something that's not too intense and too like got to do this then and that then and we've got to go here and see this movie and I just like to be able to go do a bit of shopping, play in the arcades, go chill on a beach with some chips and maybe some pizza or some pasta because Yum. This little section, I'm gonna try and find a piece of like background paper or card to go behind here. I don't know if I've got anything that would fit the colours. If in doubt, I always put yellow on a page because I love me some yellow. Ooh, maybe I could add some orange. Does that work? 
kind of. I kind of like that. I might put this behind here and have it hanging out of the journal a bit. I'm just going to go for it and not think. Um, I need my mini guillotine. So I'm going to add that at the bottom first with some Pritt stick because paper on paper always sticks with Pritt stick. I kind of don't want it completely, maybe about that much hanging off. I don't want it too hangy offy. Taking my little thing with the colours I'm going by and I'm going to choose some washi. The clouds should be at the top, I feel like. I'm going to put the red at the bottom. Okay, that'll do. I like that. If you're ever doing this where you're using like half of something, never stick it down and then put something on top of it. Always cut it in half first. Figure out how much I want sticking out. And I'm going to cut it about there. Um, you have to be a bit more conscious of how straight you're cutting it because it's a bit of a wonky shape. But there we are. So this bit is going to go here. And then I still have this bit that I can use somewhere else or on something else. I might even use it on here on the other side. And I'm going to have that like that. And the photo, let's not forget the photo because that's important. I find it easier to answer questions when I'm sticking stuff down rather than when I'm trying to think of where to put stuff. What's your favourite aspect of having grown up on a farm? I say that I grew up on a farm. I grew up with like a farming background, farming life. My grandparents lived on the farm. We lived like five or ten minutes away but we would go there every weekend and I spent a massive amount of my childhood on the farm and like learning farm stuff and about farms and you know all that sort of stuff that comes with it. There's a lot of stuff on social media that just completely slates farming and makes it out to be this big bad thing and everything but I think one of the things I love is that I have grown up knowing where my food comes from knowing how it's processed, knowing how it's made and I know that things that are put out there on social media just aren't true. Obviously there's some fact to them. Things like that. I have, I suppose, a better perspective on farming than a lot of people do. Like I've seen all the gory stuff. I know where my food comes from and I'm okay with that. I'm a meat eater and I'm completely okay with that. I love going to the farm with my family, with my brother. When my dad went milking, we would just basically get to play on the farm. Um, we had bikes and trikes. <laughs> There was like piles of rubble that we played in, just basically playing outside the milking parlour. When we were younger, we would go to my grandparents' house, which is the house that my family now live in, and we'd play there and have dinner and stuff until dad was done milking. But yeah, as we got older, we'd just play out on <laughs> the farm. I have so many amazing, amazing childhood memories that not every child gets to experience at all that I'm just so, so grateful for. I learned so much as a child growing up in that sort of environment. How did you and Jack meet? We met on Tumblr. <laughs> um, we started talking on Tumblr. Bonnie's out in the hallway playing with her chew. If you can hear that. We met on Tumblr, we started talking in 2011 and on Tumblr we would hang out in chat rooms on tiny chat with webcams. Would not advise that site anymore because it's just gone completely downhill. Tiny chat that is. Yeah, it's just become like completely infested with not so great people on cameras. Um, but back in 2011 it was where we would make chat rooms and go and hang out and that's where I made friends with one of my best friends, um, Talia, who lives in Canada, well lived in Canada, she now lives in South Korea. I made some really amazing friends through Tumblr and through just basically spending our evenings on webcam with everyone. Um, he followed my blog, ended up on one of those tiny chat things, started talking, then he went on camera and then yeah, it went from there basically. We became friends and then we became more than friends. So that was late 2011 and then in 2012 for my 18th birthday he drove all the way down south from Lancashire so it was a 300 mile drive. He only just got a car I think early 2012 and my birthday's May 2012 so yeah he'd only been driving like his own car for a little bit and he drove down south, his car broke down so even if he wanted to leave <laughs> he couldn't. <laughs> he met my family the evening he arrived, 
The next day was my birthday party where he met all my family like in the daytime and then in the evening he met all of my friends because obviously it was my 18th birthday so it was quite a big party. So yeah, he definitely is the definition of jumping in at the deep end. With that he met my whole family, my whole friendship group, all my close friends, all in one go and he was also stuck there because his car broke down. <laughs> so. It was quite intense, <laughs> but that's, yeah, that's how we met. That's where we started out. I feel like I should back this on here. I might get some white card from somewhere and mount it on white and then put it on that. Or maybe I should mount it on black. Let's get some black and white card and see. So I got black and white card and I also got some fizzy laces because <laughs> I fancied something tasty. So the way I do this to kind of visualise what it might look like um, with a black border or a white border, I put it in a corner and then I put the corner on <laughs> another corner um, of the pattern paper and that's how I kind of visualise what it might look like with a white border and then I can do the same with the black card. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with black. Do I want to go with black? Oh, I don't know. What are the pros and cons of being your own boss and running a small online business? I think the pros are the cons and the cons are the pros. You don't work for anyone, which is great, but also you don't work for anyone, so it's up to you to get your butt in gear and get work done. It's nice not being able to get up in the morning at like super early starts, but then you have to be really strict with yourself and actually get up and do work. Do you have a set monthly budget for craft supplies? No, I don't. I only really buy stuff when I really want it or if it's a really good bargain. Those are the only two times I really buy stuff. And even then it completely depends on how much money I have. So having an online shop and being self-employed means that your income is incredibly unpredictable. Unless you're earning more than enough each month, it's really hard to budget. The only time I've actually had some sort of normality and like ability, I suppose, to budget is recently since I've been doing Patreon because obviously that's like a guaranteed, well, somewhat guaranteed income each month. It does change from month to month. Um, depending on if I get new patrons or if I lose patrons. But the people who stick with me, whether it's on the $2 tier or the $25 tier, the people who stick with me, but the two... Oh, she backing. Mini freak out. <laughs> I went down there, Bonnie was outside um, and I had the back door open, so she was sunbathing. And she was barking and it was like her normal, oh my goodness, I heard something, so I'm gonna bark, bark. I'm shaking, <laughs> like adrenaline right now. And I go out there and the back gate's wide open and she was just standing there staring at it. She hadn't run out or anything. She was being so good. We have taught her to stay. And like when I go and take the recycling out the back to the back alley, I sometimes do it on purpose with her in the, in the yard. And you know, I get her to sit and stay so she knows that even though the gate's open and even though I'm going out the gate, for one, I'm coming back so I'm not gone forever. And also she's not allowed to go out there until I say she can. So she was very good, but it kind of shook me up a bit because I was like, why is our back gate wide open? Has someone come in? Has someone gone in the house? And I was like, no, they can't have because Bonnie would have been freaking out 10 times more. <laughs> Mini freak out there. But what I was saying or what I was trying to say before I was interrupted by Bonnie freaking out was that the people who stick with me, whatever tier they're on on Patreon, are the ones that mean I'm able to have a stable income, a stable lifestyle, a stable sort of, you know, level to sit on without feeling like I'm all over the place, I don't know what I'm getting paid each month. Obviously when you have a small business you don't know when you're getting paid, you don't get paid at one day in the month, you get paid throughout the month at different times with different amounts of money. So yeah, I don't really have a budget for my crafting, it's more if I have money and I have, you know, enough money to spare then I can afford to treat myself or just do a bit of bargain shopping. But if I don't have the money or I know I need to pay someone, um, I just don't spend it. I just leave it in my bank um, and try and forget about it. I need to add some of this somewhere. I just, I just feel like I need to. It needs some red up here. I keep wanting to cut this off. <laughs> I'm so used to like trimming my pages and trimming stuff down when it's all overhanging. Having another fizzy lace. How did you become affiliated with professional craft companies, i.e. do crafts and the like? So pretty much all of the companies I've worked with have found me through my YouTube channel or 
Instagram. I haven't like emailed anyone like, I wanna work with you, blah, blah, blah. They have all contacted me after seeing some, like one of my online social medias, which is obviously amazing. The fact that the hard work I put into all of the stuff I do online is noticed by the big brands. When I worked with Ducrafts, I don't do any content for them anymore. They contacted me and asked if I wanted to do a piece, like a scrapbooking piece for one of their magazine um, pages. That's not like the professional term. But yeah, like they wanted me to do a project to be in the magazine. This was a magazine that my mum had been buying for years. So for them to contact me and ask if I wanted to create something for the magazine, I was like completely blown away. I didn't think it was a real email. I thought I was being scammed. Um, so that was amazing. And then obviously off the back of that, they asked me to do more projects and yeah, it was paid work, so I got paid to create the content for the magazine and I got paid in product as well, so they sent me the stuff to make the um, project for the magazine and I got to keep the stuff they sent me, which is why I have a load of Ducraft paints and Ducraft products in my craft stash. And yeah, then they paid me in money as well, so I got actually paid for the work, which was, again, amazing. So pretty much companies just find me through my social media. Obviously I post about stuff that I love. So Filofaxes. Obviously I'm obsessed with Filofaxes. I love their planners so much. And so I'd share photos of my planners. I'd share videos of my planners. I'd tag them in the photos. And by doing that they found me through that. And they got in touch and said look we want to send you some products for you to do videos on. Which bear in mind I'm doing videos on Filofaxes anyway. So to have them get in touch and be like actually we want to send you some more stuff for you to do more content on, I was like well yeah. <laughs> but things like that I don't get paid for, it's purely product as it, as they say. So my time isn't compensated for as such, I just get some freebies. So yeah that's how a lot of companies and brands have reached out to me. I just never really know what's going to pop up in my email inbox, that's, that's how it goes with those sorts of things. Whilst I was talking about that I was still trying to figure out where to put this and I still haven't a clue. <laughs> I might try and find some red card and put that behind the black. This is where my giant rainbow stack of card comes in handy. <laughs> Um, these were sent to me by Ducrafts, which again is why I have so many of them, but I use them quite a lot for a lot of different things. Let's try and find a red that matches. See that's a bit too bright, I don't like that kind of red. That's mm, almost pink. <laughs> Maybe I've used all my red. Oh wait. No, that's too dark. Maybe this is one of those things where it's if in doubt use yellow. Will that work, do you think? Should I just use yellow? <laughs> I'm gonna just use yellow, I think. Yeah, I'm using yellow. That's it, made my decision, done. We're going with yellow. I'm gonna use that new question thing on Instagram to see if you guys have any more questions before I finish this video. Currently filming a, oh wait, Q and a journaling session. Do you guys have any questions? Smiley face. Oh no, I hate it when it does that. Okay, we'll go with that one. Um, and then we'll Boom. We shall see what you guys have to say. I've been using scissors to cut these out and usually I use a guillotine but I just don't have space for my giant guillotine on my desk right now. This card probably would have fit but the other card wouldn't have fit in my little guillotine. It's kind of straight. I feel like I still need more of that side. I do have a pretty good eye when it comes to like sticking things straight and cutting things straight. It's just stressful. I'm just like, but if I get it wrong and, and mess it up, it's there's no going back. Now, I think I'm running out of double-sided tape. Yep, I have that much left. Double-sided tape. Um, let's use that bit in the middle. I'll do that. What is your favorite craft supply that you cannot live without? Um, washi tape. I think washi tape is one of those things where it is extremely versatile. It's not massive to store or take with you anywhere and it comes in so many different designs now you can have like washi tape with pictures on plain washi tape washi tape with text on there's just 
yeah there's so much out there if i had to get rid of all my craft supplies apart from one it would be washi i would keep how do you decide what papers to start with so i think i answered that really at the beginning of this video where i look at the colors in the photos and go from there and if i've not got colors in the photos um then i use a piece of ephemera or something that goes with the photos and then pick out colors from that what inspired you to start a youtube channel i kind of answered that one what is your number one tip to turn your hobby into a business i kind of did it unintentionally <laughs> i started my self-employment journey with Daisy May Jewelry and it started off as I was gonna make jewelry because I was unemployed, I wanted to try something new. So I started the jewelry, then someone noticed it and said, hey, can I promote it on my Instagram? If you send me a few bits, I'll share a photo, blah, 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 blah. So I sent her a few bits and she shared it. And then I found the community on there, which was like a load of fashion bloggers. And I sent my jewelry to tons of them and they all posted photos and it kind of went from there. So once I had like my job set up with Daisy May Jewelry, I ventured into crafting a bit more. I loved crafting and being arty, um, but I never really like fully fell into it until I got my Instagram set up. And then from there, it kind of was like, like I said, I did the Instagram and someone on Instagram was like, can you do a video? It's kind of, I've never gone out to make it my job. I think the only time that I've been or felt more pressure to make it my job on a more permanent basis is since I've moved out because you know I've got to support myself, I've got more things I have to pay for, I am very lucky in the sense that Jack obviously has a job, a good job um, and he can pay a lot towards the house and the bills and all that. But I want to have the security of if we move back down south which is obviously a lot more expensive that I would be able to contribute a lot more. Yeah, that's the only time I've had like pressure to make it my job. Other than that, it's kind of just everything's fallen into place as and when I suppose it was meant to. I think the main bit of advice I'd give you is it isn't your hobby anymore if it's your job. At least in the first few years of it being your job, you rarely have time for it to be your hobby. Um, and you really want to do it as your hobby because you spend so long doing it as your job. I've had moments where I've been filming videos and I've just not wanted to craft in my own time because I spent so much time filming videos on it. So yeah, I think you definitely have to take that into account, but I'm gradually balancing things out and getting my routine and kind of allowing myself to just craft and not share it anywhere, not film it, but it has taken me a long time to get to that point. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but yeah, what is your favourite pen to journal with? At the moment, the Kiki K pens. I mentioned this in a recent favourites video, but the Kiki K pens have been my go-to for like planning and journaling. The ink dries really quickly. They don't make my writing too big or too thick. It's the Kiki K gel ink pens, not the Biro's. The Biro's are great, but I just don't, like I prefer gel ink over Biro. I think, should I add, should I add that there? I think I should add that there. I might add a strip of this as well. I know I said I don't wanna to cover too much of the writing space, but I feel like I need a strip of washi just there. <laughs> I think I might add some of these as well, somewhere on it. If I put the heart at the bottom, I'm gonna add one of these. <laughs> that's that's a pretty, pretty intense question, Meg. So if you guys don't know Meg, she's Meg Journals on Instagram. She's got an amazing Instagram account, so definitely recommend checking it out. She said, okay, important question. What's your ultimate all-time favorite washi? Oh my goodness. Um, I think it'd have to be a black and white one just because I use that, like black and white ones the most. Um, let me go have a look. I don't think I can choose one. I think that's actually like impossible. I'm trying to put myself in the mindset of if I was standing here and I had to grab one washi before the floor gave way, what would I grab? And I can't choose. <laughs> it's completely impossible to choose one, but this is like my most used washi, is this one with the crosses on. Um, but then I also use these ones quite a bit as well. Those are like my go-to skinny black and white ones. But then this one with the like gold glittery speckles on and the purple marbling is definitely one of my favorites. And I'm very quickly running out of it. But then also this one with the watercolored dots and there's also like, 20 more up there that I would grab <laughs> if I could. So when I'm choosing phrases to go on my pages, I try and choose ones that do relate to the page quite a bit. So I'll find one I like and then I'll go through still and see if there's one a bit better. 
Um, there's not many to go through, like these are duplicates, some of these. So yeah, I think it's good to make sure I get the right phrase on the page. And I don't mind having more than one phrase when it's like this style and then this style. I'm gonna use this one that says, count your lucky stars. Um, because I did feel incredibly, incredibly lucky to be there. So I'm going to stick that there. Might angle it a bit as well. Uh, there we are. How did you start creative journaling and how old were you when you started? I started creative journaling relatively recently. The first video I posted of like a creative journaling session, like a process video, was 2016 I think? maybe 2015. So the first video I'd posted was of the typo event that I went to and I did a journaling session of that and it's currently the top viewed video on my whole channel which is amazing. But yeah so that was my first video but I'd been creative journaling I'd say for like a few months before. This is my first journaling insert and it was from 2016 so yeah April 2016, March 2016, February 2016 January 2016 and then that's the typo page that I did for the video um, and obviously I'd done smash booking before then but I think with my smash books I, I kept them quite like mementos and stuff more than writing and I wanted something that I could like collect my memories in um, like written memories and photos along with it so that's why I started creative journaling. I would have been, here comes my rubbish maths, <laughs> Um, what am I now? I'm 24 now. January 2018 I was 23, so 2017 I was 22, 2016 I was 21. So yeah, I was 21 years old. What's your favourite thing to journal about? Travelling or home stuff? I don't travel much, <laughs> so when I have like travelling to document it is quite fun because it's like I don't just look back on the memories like, oh, that was a good trip. It's like, wow, I actually did that. But I think my main thing with all my journaling has been to journal the little things. Like, that's what I want to capture. I think both the travel stuff and the home stuff is fun to document, but in different ways. It is always fun, though, when I've done, like, a travelling thing and I've got, like, little mementos to document to. So, yeah, that's my super long journaling session. Kind of chatty Q&A journaling session. I've accomplished two pages of journaling. <laughs> but, hey, this was, like, an experiment and clearly I can't talk and journal at the same time. But hopefully you enjoyed it either way. If you want me to do another one of these in the future, then please give this video a thumbs up. I have enjoyed myself. It definitely wasn't as daunting as I first thought, so that's good. If you've watched this video all the way to the end then let me know below. I'd love to know if you've made it this far. I know a lot of people like long videos but it is new ground for me and I don't know if this is something that you guys will want to see in the future or not. <laughs> so yeah, thumbs it up and let me know in the comments if it is something that you want to see more of. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.